I will start a presentation about uh, the REST API, the new REST API from Eden Pierre, and it will be a presentation together with Carlos. We will talk about the benefits and then about the vulnerabilities and how to protect the implementations. Uh, so the first thing is uh, why REST and Many people here were in the workshop in 2019. Uh, this was a common topic. Everyone was saying, we need REST, we need REST, we, didn't, we need a REST integration. And what we notice is what Steven said all the time and what, what we have noticed here is there were so many integrations, individual integra uh, implementations from many people. Sergey from Russia had one. Orlando Curieles from Ecuador had a different one. I think Norbert had one, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Murilo had another one. So it was like spread and everyone was just uh, dealing with their own use case. And then uh, we gathered together and Hank Sin shared like uh, the initial work he made, and he, he made something completely generic using POs in Eden Pierre. So we reviewed the code of every potential option, and we noticed that Hengsin's one was the most complete, the most useful, and it was, uh, when we communicated it, uh, it was really nice because immediately Orlando Murillo said, okay, ours is way, like, it's lesser than Hengsin's one, so we, s we will stop uh, maintaining this one and we will focus on improving this one together. So that was a nice example of joining efforts and not keeping just like with many different solutions. Uh, as I said, the REST plugin uh, was initially contributed by Hengsin. He made the, like the, first commit, huge commit. And after that, we have been working together with the community, uh, mostly with, together with Norbert, uh, Beb Coffee from Brazil, and the BX team. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but... Uh, I don't know how to look at it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Basically, those are like the three top contributors: Cloud Empire, Dev Coffee, and BX. But we also had contributions from Anoti, Mada, from Victor Suarez, from Alan Descano, David Podola. Recently, Norbert did something that we have been trying to do since a long time. He needed a. He identified a need that was like shared among many people in the community and he decided to lead the way to find sponsorship, like uh, not he <coughs> bearing the expenses but sharing it with many people. So it was a, it has been a really nice exercise to have this like smaller project to do these things. Uh, so the first commit was from Hengsin. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we took over because I think he just made it for the fun of it. He's not really using it, so he didn't want to maintain it or do anything with it. So we decided to become the official maintainers. And the first thing we did is uh, was to move everything to the old data standard because at the beginning he used his own syntax for everything and it was a bit confusing. So we moved everything to the old data to have a common language with everyone. Uh, the next thing we tried to do was uh, the document everything. Everything is documented in the wiki. Uh, this makes everything easier for everyone to join. We also worked on something. So right now, uh, when you use the REST API, you get, uh, it, it is like you are writing in the UI kind of, uh, you triggered it before save, you trigger the event handlers, you trigger everything that happens normally within Eden Pure. Uh, 
So I will just show you a, a small example of something. Please don't judge, I did this on the plane, so it was just a <laughs> something to share. So, this is for example something really easy that we usually try to do uh, for mobiles, for example, because the mobile interface of IdenPier is not optimal. And this is a small example of, for example, a help desk for customers. But like, let's say Thomas wants customers to report problems with orders or something, but if you tell them, come here and, and create a request and, and they see this window, they will probably be scared and they don't want to report anything because <coughs> it is overwhelming. So uh, a way of doing it like really easy is kind of how it used to be done in the web store. So you come here, you see a list of requests, uh, you create new, and you say that I want a service request, uh, this is partner confidential, please, and you say I didn't get 10 cases of what I ordered. And then you can attach a picture or whatever. Then you hit save. Show the network. Yeah. What do you I mean, uh, the Are they console? Yeah. Uh, okay. The yeah. Ah, the network. The network. Yeah, so you get a lot of requests. Uh, and on the item pure side, you simply get the, the new request created. It was five and now it's six. I can sh do it again, so again, uh, a warranty or, yeah, let's say a warranty and it's public, and you say uh, my, my Coca-Cola lot expired, and you save it, and you can see it right away uh, here. As you can see, this is really fast. It, it, uh, Obviously, if you start doing it with remote servers, it gets slower, but uh, we did some stress testing and, and it's quite, like, it performs quite well. And once you have this, for example, you can go here and say, I open it again, Thomas employee visited the, uh, the customer and he said, uh, yeah, it is right. Uh, he got three cases with an expiration date of one week. Uh, and you save. And you can again immediately see here that there's an update. And as you can see, this is really user friendly it depends on how you code it uh, this is really fast you can do it it is much less complex than the whole item pair window the whole item pair interface and as brent said before uh, developing forms are okay they are powerful but they are really time consuming and they usually they are really hard to maintain like uh, Sometimes in the upgrades, uh, for example, the Kanban board form breaks because of some small reason and I have to go and should see what happened with the SAK update and some things are not working anymore. Uh, so for those simple cases, uh, doing this kind of code, uh, that, that's really small. Uh, this is built on React uh, with Redux. Uh, but this is really technology agnostic. That's another huge thing because uh, Norbert is using Angular. Uh, Mateos is using Flutter. We are using React. And it doesn't really matter because the API is the same. You communicate to IdemPure the same, so it doesn't really matter. And 
you have uh, one important thing, but it's just a recommendation that I do is if you're gonna follow this, keep like this is a front end. This is just a visual layer. No, don't start writing logic in the front end because then you end up duplicating the code and trying to bring the whole lead pair to the front and it doesn't work very much. Uh, but yeah, uh, we have done some things like this. Uh, <laughs> we have done some things like this. For example, uh, everyone know how long it could take to create a product that can be sold. You need to create a product, then you need to go and create prices for that product. And sometimes you need to go and create a physical inventory document to say, I have this product on hand. Those are three steps that with a small screen like this, you can do in one screen and then create all everything needed behind with a before save or with a process that takes care of everything else. Uh, this is really flexible. Uh, as I say, the, the work here is really, really small. You can see it's just eight, six classes. And it's because uh, I kind of like to separate containers and components, but you can do it much smaller. I just like to modularize and have smaller uh, functions. But, yeah, anyway, uh, I think Norbert has mentioned it, Mateo's mentioned it. This is, uh, this creates like a huge opportunity for implementers. This is a game changer in Eden Pierre. It allows us to create like mini apps for specific roles, specific people, giving them access just to a specific uh, functionality without giving them the keys to enter into their ERP. So uh, that's why I think Norbert is pushing it so hard. I think you have a, uh, uh, an implementation with kind of a web store or something like that. I have a web store quite complex. So yeah. I'm sure it. Uh, so it is, yeah, uh, it is a game changer actually. So. Uh, and everything is open, everything works with the core. We, if you find any issue, just let us know because we are always working towards maintaining it stable. Uh, yeah. uh, one problem when you do this is you don't want to open, with the token, as we said, uh, you don't want to open that to the world. You don't want Ashwara to get the token and just start <coughs> attacking you. So that's when it becomes really important to have a secure layer, a middleware man, and Carlos is going to talk about that. Uh, are there any questions so far? Is everything clear? Um, yes, like Diego said, uh, no, not a vulnerability, we don't have discovered vulnerabilities here, probably are, but we have not uh, noticed any. But there is a risk, a big risk, and is this example here. So anybody with the minimum knowledge of Chrome can enter your, your application, open the network tab, figure out what is happening there, and instead of request, change the table and get business partner information, for example. Yeah? Because the, the rest is so open, is so flexible that it's just give me the table, give me the columns, and this is the information. Yeah? No security layer here, like in SOAP UI. Yeah? For, for, SOAP, for SOAP web services, I created a, a full configuration for security where, where I said these are the fields that I want to expose and these are the tables and these are the web services but it, it was very complex to configure that. Yeah? 
In REST, uh, we changed the approach. Is this is so open, so flexible, but it's very easy. Uh, this is a risk, a real risk. Yeah, I can get that information from Chrome, open Postman, and get information from other tables. Okay. So now we had this interesting challenge: is how to process this. Or yeah. Until you have valid token. Until you have what? Valid token. If the token is invalid, so you can do anything. Yeah, but but uh, normally you must give the user a user and a password. If if it's for example the case here of request that Diego showed. So in. in oh if, if the application is like request, you have a user and a password, and they can come to Postman here and do everything, yeah? If I do here, for example, come here and uh, demo, let's <coughs> connect to demo. Okay, so you, you, you created a user in your system to enter requests. Yeah? So they have a user and a password. So they can now come to Postman, give the user password, get the token, and get the next token, and, get, and then get business partner information. If you didn't take care of configuring correctly roles and that because you can do, yeah? You can do roles and restrict and that stuff, yeah? <laughs> but this, uh, this, this API is huge, yeah? We have, we have models to query, insert, update, and delete records, yeah? So with this call here, you can insert, this is get, no, uh, get is select from tax, yeah? If you do post, it, uh, post is, is insert, put is update, and delete is delete. So the user with that <coughs> password will be able probably to do things like that, and we don't want that, yeah. And this, uh, the, there are other things here, even worse. To, uh, for example, I can have access to all the nodes. I can do cache reset. I can run processes. I can do other stuff. Okay. So we we are using this in production in, in some customers with mini applications that we have created or also web pages that we have created using this. And we came up with this kind of architecture to protect this, yeah? So we don't have the security layer that we had in SWAT. So the way to, to do this normally in the industry is to use an applicator, yeah? And we select, we, we reviewed several API gateways, and finally we chose Kraken. Yeah, but it's just convenient. You can use there are there are propri pro proprietary uh, gateways, and there are open source gateways. There are a lot. Yeah, Amazon. When you use Amazon for that, Amazon has a gateway. There are a lot. Yeah, we, we use Kraken because I, we like it how easy it is to configure it. I will show it later, okay? So this was the original uh, idea that we presented to our customer. And we want to have a, <coughs> the application is React, so it's uh, static. So we just put it in Amazon CloudFront and we go from there. The browser connects to load the React application and get to the API gateway. The browser doesn't get the information from even here. Yeah. So when you open in Chrome, you open the 
network uh, apps, you will get connected to this, <laughs> yeah? And the gateways restrict what you can do. So we configure here just the endpoints that we want to enable. Just the endpoints, because there are here, I don't know, 100 endpoints, but we just open the three or four that my application needs, and restricting the tables that my application needs. Yeah? In the API gateway, I do that. So, the gateway connects to REST via uh, protected port exclusively open for this IP address. Yeah? So even if I know the password and that, I cannot go there because I, this, this IP doesn't have a system. Yeah. And here is my email here versus Congress in our EPM. <coughs> so this is how we configure this. Okay? Now. This is, let me show you. This is Kraken, okay? They, they changed the name now, now they have uh, another name. Uh, we like it this because the configuration is very simple and they even have a website to configure the gateway, yeah? So this is where you enter, configure what you need, and at the end you save it and it's a JSON file. But you put it in the server and it's done. It's not, it's not very hard <coughs> to, at first, of course, it's hard to understand all of that and read the manuals, etc. But at the end it's a JSON file put in the server and done. Yeah? <coughs> For example, we need to open this to get the login. This is the login page. So I say ID rest out tokens and I allow the method. Yeah, I say I, I allow the method get post, in this case is post, put tokens, get roles, well, etc. etc. Let me show you one more complex. For example, this one, yeah. <coughs> Is visible there or too little? Uh, we can say post here, for example. I, I allow to use these endpoint models for table and record. And then with, uh, with another parameter, I limit the tables, the parameter table that I can use in this endpoint. Yeah? Is, uh, uh, I can write a regular expression to say which tables are allowed. Yeah? So I say, okay, my application needs to put records in business partner. So I write a rule here to just allow business partner in a put endpoint. And I can even restrict which columns they can get or whatever. Yeah? So that's the way to protect <coughs> Kraken. This, as usual, as usual with everything we do, we document it on the wiki. So there is a documentation here. Not a full documentation. How to, <laughs> how to accord it, according to what we said yesterday. Uh, but it's explained. It. And uh, I say why I chose tracking and uh, a sample example. And how to do proxy through Nginx to protect this? Yeah. So it's an example that you can follow and see what is the concept behind this. Uh, that's all.
Yep. So, Carlos. Yes. Instead of building that uh, security, correct, like layer in an identity cell, like we have a sole base, like right? why we are depending on a third party too? Uh, sorry? Like, like this restriction, correct? Configurable restriction? Instead of adding into identity. Yeah, in, in SOAP, we have a configuration <laughs> similar, similar for, 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 uh, for SOAP web services. We have that layer. But in reality, I think the people that use it so often, we use it. Steven uses it. It's really hard to start to make it work. Yeah. You, you need to configure everything in detail. It, it takes a lot of time to get the correct, uh, all the correct configuration. <coughs> Here you can prototype. Immediately you can do configuration. And then you refine. When you have we did this with Diego, yeah. Diego developed the application without restrictions, connecting directly to REST. When the application was ready, we checked the points that I need to open and move it to the, to the gateway. Yeah. It is a lot simpler than going to the configuration table and create a, a, Additionally, we needed a one or more two packs to get the SOAP configuration running in that stuff. Yeah. In this, another, another point about that, yeah? In, 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 in our configuration in SOAP, we had security, but the API gateway <coughs> had a lot more functionality than just security, yeah? They can do uh, throttling, for example. When they, when they see that uh, an application is throwing 1,000 requests per second, they can stop <coughs> with a break there, yeah? And they can invoice also. You can set rules in applications normally and say, I invoice per get. And you, you can have metrics there and invoice people before the users of the gateway. So, API gateways are not just security. They have a lot more functionalities to, to exploit. The throttling, I mean, for me, is really important because uh, it's uh, protection against uh, DOS attacks, yeah? <coughs> when you have this open, a uh, hacker can, fend, can send 1,000 requests and crash your server. So the API gateway also controls that. Uh, Frank? Uh, just wanted to know, um, you said uh, if I control the roles better, if, if you only give the, um, the users access to, to what was it, request, then they couldn't uh, request the business partner. But the other things can happen from outside. Yes, yes. Yeah, when, when you connect through the rest, uh, mm -hmm. You connect with a role, okay. so you have all the security, <coughs> role security from either Okay. So it's not that it's hundred percent exposure, yeah. but what I don't know. Sometimes people <coughs> don't configure their role security or need to give access to business partner mm -hmm. because we need the name, and then you are exposing more than you want. So it, it would be a very big time and uh, configuration because you you want to expose business partner, and then but then you need to go and restrict all the columns that you don't want the user to get. It's, it's more work. Yeah, I just want to complement that. These API gateways are kind of a standard middleware. Yeah, most of the middle-sized big companies because they offer like a marketplace for the developers. And for example, in the case of the Java developers, some of these API gateways create the Swagger documentation for you. So if you are a developer and you are not familiar about what are the services that this layer is available, <coughs> I can go there, they can show me the privilege, the limitations, I can subscribe to the services, I can request, that can send notifications the manager for approval that that web service is 
ready for you as a developer. So they are quite a standard for most of the organizations. So we don't, you don't want to use this one as you mentioned. Um, when you are deploying your web service, maybe what they will be doing is just saying <coughs> to you, okay, this is my API gateway, please connect with them and they will be doing the work. Okay. So it's very standard practice. Yes. We, 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 we talked about creating a security layer for REST like SOAP, but then we checked it, how the same market does, and this is standard. Yeah? We said we don't reinvent that we use. That's just what is normal. And yeah, it adds a lot of new things. I'm wondering Just wanna mention, yeah. Just wanna mention that microservices architecture is like an a complementary architecture to Idempier, but it's not a replacement because the architecture approach that we use is more in the server side OSGI architecture, which is more for ERP kind of processes. Microservice is more for <coughs> small, middle-sized applications where you want to have these cloud native deployments and new trends or things like that. They are complementary. So in this case, it doesn't make sense to have an ERP in, in microservice, to be honest with you, but it's a good complement. So we can create these additional applications and be connected with the ERP. So that is, is like they work together, but they are not replacement, just in case. <coughs> Uh, for example, with microservice question. For example, uh, if you are using React, uh, you can write the client application, but uh, also React has uh, the JavaScript uh, backend, and uh, you can implement it another way. Because if you want to li like slugs and other web-related uh, related uh, like features, you can do this way. Because I okay. It's a uh, many <coughs> client side. There is a SSR, which is a server side rendering. That is what IDMP are doing. Every page, which is returned by the server, is server side rendering. Maybe five years ago, every, everybody says we don't need server side rendering. So this is the CSR, client side rendering. But nowadays, today, all applications need backend also. So they recognize handle communication between, between the uh, REST API and the HTML rendering is, uh, is uh, expensive. So that if you are rendered on the server side, you can get result in maybe 20 milliseconds. If you want to the same on the client side, then you need to wait the network traffic. And that is, uh, so, so, so that is uh, strange, inter interesting, but also, also I, I mean, uh, the IDMP is good candidate to use as good backend arrest for a for REST API. <coughs> more questions? No? Okay. Uh, so we have a couple of things more to talk about. Uh, I don't know if uh, you want to there was one talk prepared from Laita about Metabase, but she could not come here. But I don't know if you want, I can show you in 10 minutes just very likely what we did with Metabase. And, but I will not go deep because it will take long and, and we are almost out of time. Do you want to <coughs> see what you did, what yeah. we did with Metaverse? Yeah. 